This video is going to be covering how to set up your micro E weld head paired with your Eco DC welder. In this case, we have the welder set up to accept a round electrode that's typically used for thermal compression. If we want to incorporate a parallel gap electrode, which is these, this tutorial will show you how to do that. So the first thing is we need to loosen both of these screws up in order to have these receptacles accept a square electrode. So I'm going to loosen them up just enough that when I come in here, I can pull this brass fitting out and away. Let's do that just a little bit more. And then I can rotate it to the opposite end. And you can see that now there's a little notch in there. So I can push this back and repeat that process with this other electrode. Again, I was close, but just needed to remove that just a little bit more so I can make the full rotation. And now I can tighten these up just a little bit. I want them to be a little bit loose for the installation, but tight enough that they won't come out too far and get loosened to a point where I have to readjust them. <clears throat> so when you so when you're ready, we can take our electrodes out of the container and they're oriented in a specific way. As you can see, there's an edge on this side, an edge on that side. And so we don't really want them like this and we don't want them uh, let's see if I can. There is a specific way where you can potentially make them crooked. But what we want is for them to be oriented in the same plane so that they're both horizontal in this case, because they're not perfectly square on their tip. So that way it looks good. You can rotate them so that they're oriented in a vertical orientation if you want. So when you're ready, you can get your electrodes out. And these can be oriented in two different ways. In the, in the video, this is oriented in the vertical. This is my preferred orientation. If you rotate them, one quarter turn, so they look identical still, but now they're set up in a horizontal formation. Again, doing that in camera. I like this orientation best. So to get that in, we'll hold both of them and then drop them in like that. Now, while this, this weld head is currently off, so when I pull on this, this will disengage the magnet that holds this in place, and I'm supporting it with my finger. So what I like to do is I like to have it freely standing, and I like to have it, this is all the way to the bottom, this is all the way to the top. So I like to be somewhere in the middle. And then while applying pressure on the top of the electrodes, just so they don't drift around, and I want to make sure that they're making good contact with my welding surface. The knob on the right here, I'm going to tighten that up. Okay, so that's tight. Then I'm going to tighten these electrode holders. And that's going to force them back. And so that each side of this Well, head. So this is one side, this is the other. When I now loosen this knob up, assuming I didn't do it too tight, and it looks like I did. So in this case, I'm going to just use some pliers just to loosen that up just a little bit, help myself out. When I spread that open, you can see that the electrodes stay 
in their orientation, but now we're creating a gap. Now, what's the best gap? Usually a minimal gap is, is best, but if we need something specific, we can incorporate some, some capped on tape or some sort of a shim that's non-conductive. And I have some here, so we'll just use this as an example. But I will slide this insulating layer all the way down so that my gap remains constant between maintaining this electrode. And you can see, let me pull this aside, you can see that I also want it not all the way to the very tip because I don't want the heat generated from the weld to ruin my my uh, insulating layer. So for ease of, of the other steps, we're going to remove that so we can see more of what's happening. So again, the, the welder is still off. So I'm going to support this while I push down so that these don't slam. See that? So I have my finger below it. And I, I caught it before it hits. And I'm using, I believe this is 800 grit sandpaper. And this is important so that these two electrodes sit perfectly on the welding surface that you're going to be using. In this case, I have the, uh, the plane that's supplied with the welder. So I'm going to, with, with no additional pressure except the weight of the head, drag this away horizontally. And then I'm going to lift it up a little bit and drag it. And not lifting up, but straight. And my goal, when I get close, as you'll see, two uniform lines coming from both electrodes. When I see that, then the electrode has appropriately been planed out for both sides. Now, what I like to do beyond that is to clean the electrodes just a little bit because there are some metal shavings that were produced by doing so. Now we can blow them off or we can use a brush if you have access to one of these. This is just made of fiberglass and it's just a polishing or a scratch brush. So I'm just gonna remove any of those away. And I'm happy with that. <clears throat> and now I can set my weld head. So I'm going to raise this up just a little bit so we can see more of that. And I'm going to flip on my weld head. And so this is now the resting position of my weld head. If I'm pushing on that, it's going to just be locked in. So now at this point, I can go to my screen and we can hit the weld head control. And then I prefer auto control if I'm running parts that are repeated and are exactly the same. If I'm doing R&D, then direct control can be useful. So I'm going to go for this example, go into direct control, which is using the larger foot pedal. I can go through this menu, select the parameters that I want. I'm going to have my part check allowance to be high, high being defined as one millimeter, so that as I'm identifying what my part check allowance should be, that I can. Uh, I can dial that in tighter, but for now, I'll do one millimeter. Hit close, and now I can come down. And with the direct control, you can see I can come down partially more, less. 
until I want to commit, come down all the way, and it makes it well. So let me put some metal here, and then it will do a weld. Come back up. All right, let's do another one. Perfect. <clears throat> now let's say, let's say that we get a discharge error. And this is going to be somewhat common with these electrodes because if this is any different from from the plane that we planed it to, let me just check. So let me drop this down. Got a discharge error. Sometimes I'll double check to see if those are being married up properly. Make the settings a little different just so that we have a good example. So it's going to discharge the power. Looks great. If I had a foil that was welding to this, then I would make my settings adjusted for that. But just as another example, it's going to come down, do a weld hold it for my weld head settings, and then come back up. Perfect. If we ever need to adjust these electrodes or, sh or um, address them because we're getting discharge errors or they become contaminated through sticking, like we saw in those two examples, again, we can either turn off the weld head and again, catch, catch this before it slams down, or I can have it drop down, trigger a, a weld discharge, it'll hold it down for a little bit longer, and then run another sleek, or a, another a row of, of that. Alternatively, I can have my finger here, flip off the weld head, and it will drop down. If you don't catch, I kind of wanted to show you that, if I don't catch it, right, it's going to hit kind of hard. And that might throw things off. Perfect, yeah. So you can see now it's only contacting on one side. And so I may have to adjust this in such a way or maintain my electrode so that both are now making contact. I hope this video is helpful and answers any questions that you may have in setting up a parallel gap electrode with your micro E and Pico DC.